like a circle in a spiral, like a wheel within a wheel, never ending or beginning, like the circles that you find in the windmills of your Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. Will, we got the debonair ideal segment. It's all about Sinatra tonight, which I think is great. You know, it's funny. It's funny, yeah. Will. I I grew up Italian. It's funny because my last name is not Italian. That could almost be my answer. Mine too. And yeah. mine too, by the way. It's yeah. funny because that could be my answer to, like, the things that people don't know about you. Um, I primarily grew up Italian. Even though my name is Armenian, um, I am one quarter Armenian and three quarters Italian. So there you go. There's something you, you might not know about me. Uh, I was very much brought up in uh, Italian culture. And, in fact, at one time I, I spoke – uh, Italian somewhat fluently uh, with some of my relatives. So uh, Sinatra was very much a part of our culture growing up. So yeah, it, it really was. Um, and 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 you know, it was. This, I grew. I'm I'm half Italian and on my mom's side. And you know, I grew up in Brooklyn and Staten Island in New York City. And we all lived in that same. We all lived near each other growing mm-hmm. up. Um, and Saturday night was Saturday with Sinatra on the radio. And this was still in the, you know, when I grew up, I was in the TV age, but Sinatra was on after dinner on Saturday night. Oh, that's how, I, and that's how it was. Dude, my family members used to sing Sinatra on, and I, I still think they do, and I try and distance myself from it. But karaoke, oh, they were always singing Sinatra. Someone was always singing Sinatra, trying to sing Sinatra at my family gatherings and stuff. It was... And no one can sing it like Sinatra. You know no. what I'm saying? I watched that Sinatra tribute on Saturday that they did, and yeah. I was not happy with it. Um, yeah. Because it wasn't Sinatra, and they didn't sing it. They, they did a fine job, but it wasn't Sinatra. Right. But uh, it's his 100th birthday on Saturday. He would have been 100 years old on Saturday. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, but Frank really was the debonair ideal. I mean, he really, he, he epitomized that thing. Um, and there's so much, like, and we could, there's a lot of connections, too. We'll talk about some of the connections with cigars also, because Frank was connected. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of little-known facts about Frank Sinatra, and there's a good thing, and I think we got to put it in the show notes. On a, It was on Cleveland.com did this, um, like, 100 facts of Frank Sinatra. I'm not going to go through the 100 facts. Mm. But there were some really interesting ones here. For example... Frank Sinatra is on the Hollywood Walk of Fame three times. Not one time, three times. Yeah, he's got one for film, Mm -hmm. one for music, and one for television. Wow. You know, and you have that little, I guess they put that little symbol where it is. Um, You know, and everyone knows the the film and the music piece, I think, uh, very well. But, you know, TV, he was a big part of those Dean Martin roasts. Um, Mm -hmm. At least they were a little, I know they're before your time, but yeah, you know. So that was, you know, really, really interesting, too. You go on Amazon.com, okay? If you search for Frank Sinatra, 36,306 items come up. Wow. So Frank's still very much, you know, he's not forgotten about um, mm. out there. Um, another little interesting thing that I read is that, you know, Frank was always the guy who he projected confidence. He was debonair. You know, he was the guy you wouldn't want to tell to put out that cigar today. I mean, can you picture that Frank Sinatra walks in and lights up a cigar? Would you tell Frank Sinatra? I wouldn't tell Frank Sinatra to put out that cigar. Yeah, from <laughs> what I what I heard about Frank was that he was kind of a uh, – I don't want to say he was rough around the edges, right? But like you said, well, I think you said it best. He was confident, right? He He was the guy that, like you said – you wouldn't want to tell him to put out a cigar. You wouldn't tell him that, like, you can't smoke in here. You know, those type of things. You wouldn't want to tell the Frank because he was very confident in what he did. He was very, um, 
I think, uh, sure of himself. And, uh, you know, he wanted to do what he wanted to do. I think he's one of the greatest entertainers, um, maybe of all time, certainly of, you know, multiple generations, uh, identifying with Frank Sinatra uh, and recognize Frank Sinatra for his uh, entertainment uh, type value. So, yeah, no, I mean, you look at the you look at the 20th century list um, in those three cat. I mean, especially film and music, I'll say he's probably one or you know he's in that top five in both of those categories, especially I think music too. Um, you know, the, but the thing about the confidence piece that in this this Cleveland article had a real interesting thing. He suffered from depression, hmm. which you would throughout his whole adult life. And I'm like, you would have never known it. No. You would have never it, known it. What's interesting for me is growing up, Italian, and we, we watched the movie The Godfather a lot, especially yeah. every Thanksgiving, relentlessly. Uh, <laughs> as young as I was, six, seven years old, I can remember – the Godfather being on TV and being uh, very much a part of uh, our culture as a family, uh, which is kind of interesting because there's <laughs> a lot of things in The Godfather that a, a young individual probably shouldn't be exposed to, the horse head in the bed and that, and that whole thing. But um, the character Johnny Fontaine is, I, from what everything I've ever heard, is derived from the character Frank Sinatra. Uh, which I think is kind of interesting as well. Can you guys see me? I think the video went down. I can't see you, but I can certainly hear you. Okay, so yeah, I got disconnected uh, twice, so I don't know what happened, but I'll keep going. No, I think that's a real good point, you know, with, with what you just said as far as that Godfather analogy goes as well. Um, to totally agree with you on that. And, you know, another thing is he was synonymous with that Las, Ve with Las Vegas. He was, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, it's interesting to me, uh, speaking of the Las Vegas connection in Frank being synonymous with Las Vegas, Las Vegas is one of those cities where, uh, you may love going to Las Vegas. You may hate going to Las Vegas. Uh, I still love going to Las Vegas because it's all about enjoying life. I think going to Las Vegas and I find Amongst all of the regulations about smoking, Las Vegas remains smoker friendly. And to have some of those iconic figures in history and entertainment history um, being associated with Las Vegas, you know, going there and being smoker friendly is kind of it's kind of all part of it. Right. Like we can go to a lot of different places in Las Vegas and enjoy a cigar. Um, and I picture um, people like Frank Sinatra going to Las Vegas and enjoying cigars and things like that, Will. Oh, totally, totally, totally agree. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because, you know, Las Vegas, uh, you know, they were, even, they were even trying to take Casa Fuente away from us right now, mm. um, which, you know, but lucky that you could, you could still smoke there. I yeah, mean, I and love I'll going... tell you what, over the years, Casa Fuente has uh, maintained their status as a – cigar smoking destination and i think that's really important that we maintain places like that that have that iconic status uh as being a cigar smoking destination and there's a, a lot of other ones in in las vegas as well um that maintain their status smoking in the casino going to places um uh andres in the monte carlo as i i described you know that's very much like a Frank Sinatra kind of moment for me that I talked about on the show before, you know, going and enjoying a fabulous meal and going to a room where we can have cigars and drink cognac for hours on end and have cigars uh, in Las Vegas. I, I, I think that's really important. I think that it kind of embodies the spirit uh, of Las Vegas and, you know, Frank Sinatra and all of the uh, personalities back in the day that helped Las Vegas be what it is today. Yeah, you know, and, and the other thing, just so um, I don't know if you're aware, but um, it just opened uh, with the, when the big smoke was there. Now Davidoff's got a lounge, a smoking lounge, um, and it's located over at the Fashion Center Mall, which it's right. That's kind of in that um, Venetian uh, Mirage area. Mm -hmm. um, and believe me, I don't think it's gonna take a lot away from Casa Fuente because they're both they're gonna be destinations. So I think it's a good option that we have now as another place to go smoke there now. You know, there wasn't really a Davidoff 
there's a lot of dab of stores and kiosks there, but not a place that you can smoke. But you know, Frank Frank had a connection with cigars. So what, you know, yeah. What was the connection with cigars? Well, okay, there's a couple. So first, let's just talk about you know one of um, Avo, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, Avo was the person who wrote the music for his song "Strangers in the Night." Really, I didn't know that. Is really? Yes. That's interesting. Yep, yep. So there is a connection there, but there's even a further connection, Paul. There, there are a couple of Frank Sinatra cigars out there. Um, and the one I'm, I have not. And by the way, any listener who gets me the Frank Sinatra cigar, um, I will mail them a five pack, mm. okay, of something and a shirt and a t-shirt. Um, but Frank Sinatra. Uh, hey, hold on. Will no, I, w- I want to just say that uh, sometimes we are. It, most of the time we are very generous with our listeners who win uh prize packs and we will send them extra cigars uh in exchange for our listeners yeah yeah and we will take cigars from our personal collection and, this will be for our personal collection these will yeah, be and, um, and send cigars to people yeah because uh, i th- i just think that's a prudent thing to do but yeah anyway. yeah I, but but i have not been able to track this these down um one was made by thompson um it's called frank's way um i don't think they make it anymore but the other one was the Frank Sinatra cigar, and it was made by um, Philippe Gregorio, who have smoked a yeah. lot of his cigars. The name um, sounds familiar. Yeah, um, and yeah, he's had a couple of good releases in, uh, over the years, especially this one this year called The Power, which was really good. But he apparently was commissioned by Frank Sinatra um, to make this cigar, I guess, Philippe's been around for 25 years. He's been around doing cigars for a long time. So, um, and the interesting thing about this uh, is that they had one request of Philippe Gregorio um, when the cigar was made. They told him it had to be made in the Dominican Republic. And I'm reading this on the uh, website of Philippe Gregorio. They, he, when he told them I don't have a factory um, in, in the DR, their response back to him was, well, go build one. <laughs> so he did. Um, and the Sinatra cigar was born. Um, and it uh, looks like a beautiful Ecuadorian Connecticut shade uh, cigar there. And it's called the Sinatra. So he does have a cigar out there. And you haven't smoked these, Will? I have not smoked. Yeah, I have not smoked these at all. I know they're out there. Um, and I, the, the Thompson ones actually had a couple of favorable reviews from the people who wrote, uh, did them. I don't know about the, the Philippe Gregorio one. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I actually tried because I was thinking about this a couple of months ago, and I could not track these down. Hmm. Um, so because I wanted to see if we could smoke it on the show, no one. Frank's birthday is a week after my birthday, so I kind of had this on the radar for a while um, that I wanted to do something eventually around Sinatra with this. Yeah, it's interesting for for us to uh, when we identify with a cigar that we haven't smoked to go seek it out. So yeah. I will use my powers of the internet to uh, to help you out with that, Will. Yep. And then, yeah, I'll actually do at the end of the show, we'll do a, a, a little giveaway around Sinatra. I'll save it for the end of the show, though. But Yeah, I have a prize pack uh, for episode 167. It actually comes from uh, Psycho. It's a cutter, a lighter, and a two-pack in a coffin that we're going to give out at the end of the show. And we'll, okay. uh, we'll give that out, uh, the question out on the next segment. Yep, I, I already have the question, so... Yeah, so I'm going to win yep. it. It's a, I tell you what, the lighter and the cutter are awesome. Uh, especially the lighter. It's a single flame lighter. It's great. Yep. yep. I haven't yet reviewed the cigar, although some of our friends at uh, Cigar Corner uh, went to an event that was sponsored by Psycho and uh, spoke very favorably of that cigar. Is that the white lighter? The little yes. white lighter? Yes. I love that white lighter. The little, uh, yes, I use that lighter um, quite a bit. Excellent. Well, with that, we're going to take a short break. Come back and talk about our stogies of the week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 